All righty. Uh, I wanted to say some things about being old and awesome, being awesomely old. And I don't mean I'm 60 or even really 70, but you know, old. A geriatric is probably technically starting at 75. They give you the government benefits at 65. So that's broadly speaking, 65 is elderly. You look at uh, you look at old time actors like on, on TV, Errol Flynn. He died when he was 50. If you see pictures of him when he was 50, he looks 70, 65. He looks like an old, old guy. Really bad lifestyle. Probably, in fact, a lot of alcohol and smoking and just the typical American uh, diet, which is mostly a lot of meat uh, and a lot of just cooked stuff, whatever it was. You know, what, what, what is the, what are the 10 things that make up the typical diet? Well, potatoes and products of t potatoes in their various many forms and wheat in its many, many guises. So that's 70%. Uh, Once in a while, you know, a tomato and a piece of lettuce because uh, mostly in tomato paste and then whatever meat it is. And out of that very limited amount of uh, or a variety of food, that's what you're trying to build vitality out of. Well, that's what Errol Flynn, look at Peter Lorre. I think he died when he was 56. And he looks like, you know, he's been, a t he's like possessed by a thousand demons. He looks like a legion, that guy. Uh, well, he had health issues, but why did he have health issues? Well, some of the stuff he was doing may not even be his fault. You know, people take a medication and they get addicted to uh, the painkillers and, you know, their life is, is ruined. I think that happened to Bella Lugosi. Uh, he didn't start as a, as a dope fiend. He just ended that way because of incompetent medical situations. So, the accelerated aging. The, the cliche is, well, not the cliche, but the old time vegetarian or health conscious saying is, it takes 70 year, years for your diet to kill you. Uh, three score and 10. And then not if you have a good diet. And why diet? Because you're getting the nutrients. Well, so what about nutrients? Well, they are the building blocks, the raw materials that your body uses to repair yourself. If you don't have the necessary parts to repair yourself, guess what? Exactly. Uh, you're old before your time. So, uh, so I've worked with uh, older people. I like to work with older people. I like it a lot. You can't be anybody's motivation. They have to bring their own motivation. You can burn yourself out uh, with the futility of being the only one who cares. And I've been in that situation. Uh, you know, you, you eventually learn that you, you can't be doing that. It's disrespectful. It's dishonoring to yourself. You know, the myth of Sisyphus, people, a lot of times they get it wrong. Uh, but the idea of, the idea of you push the, it's like uh, Camus wrote the myth of Sisyphus. Uh, I, I read it. I believe that the point was that the meaning of life is that mo moment of satisfaction when you get to the top of the hill and that you got that moment where you can see the vista and then it goes down again and you start the slog again. That's Camus' interpretation. That's not the actual myth. The myth is, uh, I read this, I believe, oh, I, I checked it out. I hope I'm remembering what I think I concluded. But the myth is that he didn't, you don't get to the, you don't get to the top of the hill. It's too much and it rolls down again. And even if that is not the actual myth, yeah, it, it's another myth then that, that illustrates the futility of caring more than other people care. Yeah. Something, something that's deeply meaningful to me is that life, you have to have meaning. You have to have be making some kind of a contribution. This is not the story of my life. This is a maturity thing. You have to contribute. You can't be the person who just takes because you're so special. Uh, you're not special. You're not special except in the sense that everybody is special and if everybody, then nobody. So yeah, you are, but no, no you're not. Uh, this is not tough love. This is just, if you don't know that, your kindergarten teacher was lying to you and you believed it and continued to have a very immature outlook. So believe it or not, I do have some points, not just wandering, uh, wandering around. Uh, so working with uh, older people, I was working with uh, a woman who is 88 years old and she was falling, falling uh, on a, like uh, several times a month. And that's very, very serious. You know, you're getting ready to die if that's the case. And I'm not kidding. Uh, you know, you fall, you break a hip, you die in six months. That is the, the pattern. And you, it takes, you have to do what you can do. So what I had her do is just hold, holds onto a post and uh, does high steps. So I lowered the ring to about belly button level, hip level, whatever is appropriate. And she just marches. She brings one foot up to the bottom of the ring and another. She's got that mark to hit. And it's only 10, 10 big steps, maybe 20. 
It's not a lot. Maybe it's two rounds of that. It's a little bit, but you're training the central nervous system along with the, the musculature. And another thing is the toe raises. Just, you know, hold on to it for balance because that matters. And just up and down five times, 10 times. This is a lot of work for an old person. They're doing what you do when you're working really, really hard. They're working really, really hard. You got to honor that fact, I say with great passion. Another thing that was has been very, very successful, one foot balance. You stand on one foot and you just balance and you're holding onto the post and being safe, but all of your weight is on one and then you let go of the post a little bit you, uh, and you just depend on your own balance and you do that for 5 or 10, 15, 20 seconds, whatever it is, then the other foot, you go back and forth a few times because balance is a highly trainable uh, skill. You can do this. You, you uh, stand up, stand on one leg, close your eyes. And the older you are, the, le the sooner you lose your balance. And if you're young, should be a minute, should be, you know, as long as you want. It may take a few moments to get it, but then you get it and you can do it. Uh, the older you get, it's it just, it's a lot harder. It's a trainable and losable uh, skill. So I do that every once in a while and I'll get myself up to a minute or whatever. I mean, it's just a matter of, but you have to keep on coming back to it. Otherwise you lose it. So my point is uh, being amazing when you're older. I referenced my, my great uncle who was lean and lived to be 95 and he ate moderately. And he, was it genetic and just happened to have a good lifestyle and lived a long time? Or was it uh, that he had a good lifestyle and that made him live a long time? And it's not a, it's not a debate that's worth having because you do what you can do. And you can't do a lot about your genetics. So you, you don't sweat the, the things that you can't change. What can you do? Do that. And no excuses if you're not doing the things you can do. I'm talking about uh, being old and uh, uh, amazing. Uh, you have to train. Uh, when you're young, you have to train. You have to train your conduct. Uh, you have to learn from how the world is. And when you're older, you think you know how the world is. Well, you, are, you think that too when you're young. That's what maturity is. The more mature you are, the closer your understanding of reality is to what reality actually is. You understand things the way they are, the illusions, the delusions, that the idealism, just the, this is how it should be. You, you're enlightened from that. It doesn't mean you don't have ideals, but you should not have idealism. It should not be your philosophy. Things are going to basically work out. Maybe they will, but it's not because that's how the universe is. If you are older, in your late 60s, and you're looking to train, so one of the things you do is you jump onto a plate not a box, a plate, and then it's a little higher and a little higher, and you ease your way into it. If you don't lose the weight, then you got that 30 extra pounds that you got to explosively move up, and you can't be doing that because it's too much weight and something's going to tear. I know a young athlete some years ago who was preparing for the CrossFit Games, and I think it was 30-inch box jumps, and hundreds of them, hundreds of them, oh, day after day after day, after day preparing, and ruptured an Achilles tendon. And he said that, you know, before it happened, for a week or some days or however long it was, he felt that area felt a little, it felt a little different. Well, well that's, who would know? How would you know? But, but it's a warning. But it's a warning that is, you don't know what it's a warning of. So my point is, you do a little, and then you do a little more, and a little more, and a little more. Uh, that way, you ease, you give your body a chance to, to recover and to adapt, which is the point of what I'm talking about, is recovery. The older you are, the, the longer it takes to recover. You can be just as strong, like my dad was in his 70s. He could bench press well over 300 pounds, but it takes longer to recover. So that's the point. You work out less, but you work out just as hard. A little bit of common sense. So I guess that's enough for now. Have a great evening.